CataractCoach.com. How will you recenter this IOL? Now, centration is key, especially for the best optical performance from a multifocal lens. Now, this is from Dr. Beard and Meg Parra at the Will's Eye Hospital in Philadelphia, USA. He was on the podcast yesterday, a great podcast. We talked about all the differences of private equity group, private practice group, academic groups. What are the challenges? Are they even any different? Is a big academic group essentially just a big private equity group? You got to listen to the podcast. If you're a young ophthalmologist, you certainly, certainly should listen to it. Now, going inside here and making some marks, looks about three millimeters posterior to the limbus there. That looks pretty good here. And now placing trocars. You want to learn how to place a trocar appropriately for pars plana? Ratandarounds.com. There's a video exactly on this topic. How do you place a trocar in the pars plana? Now, doing a pars plana partial anterior vitrectomy here. Notice how the cutter is going in through the pars plana via trocar. And you've got an AC maintainer infusion via the anterior chamber of the eye here. Put a little triumphant if you need to, but clean up the vitreous so you don't have the lens entangled. Now a little bit of viscoelastic here. Now this is a multifocal lens. Patient really wants a multifocal lens, but you're going to have a hard time centering up this multifocal lens. So our surgeon here is going to take this one out of the eye. This looks like a Technus design multifocal. Not sure exactly which one. Maybe it's a Synergy or Odyssey or Technus multifocal. But now Dr. Megpar is going to cut the lens, bisect it here, and remove it. And going to replace it with a different multifocal lens here. Now we don't have too many options when it comes to three-piece multifocal lenses. So he's going to do something unusual with a single-piece multifocal lens. Now, more anterior vitrectomy. You saw a little bit of triumphs alone. Now, passing Gore-Tex suture. Look at that. Passing of the Gore-Tex suture. And here comes, looks like a Bausch and Lomb style lens, where it has little eyelets at the haptic optic junction here. So he's going to pass this 8-0 Gore-Tex through those eyelets. This may be that in Envy lens, which was recently had an FDA recall here in the U.S. for some... It's, uh, some potential TAS issues, but now I think it's back on the market. And now placing the other suture as well on the other side. And now very important to keep the spaghetti string straight here. Really very important. Now folding up the lens, putting it inside the eye. And what you're going to do is you're going to fixate it with the Gore-Tex. So here comes the lens just using lens folding forceps to fold it in half. And then for this, you probably want an incision that's a little larger. Let's say 275 on the low end, but probably more like 3 millimeters wide. Now, there we go. Get that positioned appropriately. And you get the haptic tucked here. And it's important to have the correct positioning of the Gore-Tex around that eyelid on both sides so as to not cause a twist into the IOL. You want that optic to stay very planar and very much perpendicular or flat to the iris here. So pulling it in, there's a picture showing exactly how to loop the Gore-Tex. See that? If you loop it exactly like it's shown there, You'll keep the lens in the appropriate planar position here. Very important to look at that diagram and do that in this specific orientation. Now, you can pull these two ends out of the eye nice and easy, grabbing both of these, and then you'll suture the Gore-Tex in position. Now, remember the Gore-Tex, this Ado Gore-Tex, is very slippery. It's an off-label use in ophthalmology. Make sure your knots are very square and appropriately tied and not too much tension, just enough tension to center this up because the Gore-Tex is strong enough that you tie it up really tightly, you can actually cheese wire it through the IOL material. You don't want to do that. And so now tightening this up one side, then the other, just to get it appropriately centered, pushing the knot inside the sclera here. Now the trocars are obviously out. And if you need to, you can also place a temporary vicro suture to help ensure the closure of those trocar entry sites. So again, rotating that knot around, and the lens looks really nicely centered here. Yep, there you go. Here comes the vicro suture, just to make sure these don't leak, so that you have a nice air, uh, watertight closure here. Close the conjunctiva as well. That looks great. And this page is going to have a beautiful, beautiful outcome. So Nikki is there. Hey, really, check out that podcast. So much great material. The podcast series on Cataract Coach is available everywhere. The sole purpose is to make you a better surgeon so you can do things like this. Look at that beautiful post-op day one outcome. And look at that centration. Pow, that is bang on. So check out that podcast. Remember also, redandrounds.com. You're ready to be every single day. You're going to love it. Learn how to place those trocars, will you?